WPSR interview, the one and only take. Okay. Whenever you guys are ready, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, Greg, so great to see you. It's very nice of you to sit down here with me. Glad to be here. Yeah. I'm Matt DiCostanza, um, manager of WPSR, Purchase Student Radio. I'm with uh, Greg Sestero, who um, is best known as Mark from The Room. And you have a new book that was just released. Yep. Um, I wrote about my experience making this cinematic gem. And uh, really, I think the story behind um, the movie is crazier and even more hilarious than the film actually is. So my goal is to share that as well as share kind of what it takes to try to make it in Hollywood and following your dreams and how those sometimes don't always work out the way you planned. Yeah. But um, I think at the end of the day, it's a, an inspiring character story. I think so, yeah. You, you really kind of reframe Tommy. Um, I, I read a little bit of the book, and he really is like a real endearing character in your book. At yeah. least the parts I read. Maybe, maybe yeah, I mean, some... I think what's interesting about Tommy is you... He's gregarious, he's mysterious, and there's just parts of you that really feel for him, parts of you that really are baffled by him. And so I really wanted to capture that in the book. Yeah, yeah. I haven't read all the book. I'm interested to uh, to hear kind of like the, the woman's perspective on the set because um, cause a lot of the film is kind of like, uh, it's like clearly from, from a male mind, <laughs> you know? Um, so, so that'll be interesting. I'm gonna, gonna, gonna read it probably on the train tomorrow. Um, so, in The Elephant Man, the, the play in the film The Elephant Man, uh, the physician, Dr. Frederick Treves, goes to a circus sideshow and he finds uh, John Merrick, The Elephant Man, who's a physically disabled uh, sideshow freak. Do you ever feel like the Frederick Treves to Tommy's John Merrick? Um, that's a really... Interesting analogy. Yeah. I never, never thought of that. Yeah, it sounds smart, but it's not really. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know what? I just, at that point, I just kind of needed a friend. I think the, the book is definitely an outsider story. And I think Tommy and I are both in different ways outsiders. And uh, we found this kinship on struggling, on trying to follow our dreams to Hollywood. And I think that's kind of where our friendship started. Yeah. And it, and I think it I think it is a like a genuine friendship, you know. The the way you uh you kind of poke fun at Tommy. Like I, I do the same thing with my friends, you know, like Yeah, it's like, it's an unlikely friendship, but it, it at its core, I think it has the the basics that most friendships have. Yeah. Um I'm sure like he's such a big personality. Um was the fr I'm sure the friendship was challenged, you know. So like what were the challenges with your friendship with Tommy? I think just being totally different people, uh, seeing life totally differently. Yeah. Um, I think what I've come to learn is just to let him do his thing and not try to stop it. Yeah. He definitely uh, seems like he wants control a lot of the time. Um, so I'm trying to ask questions that you haven't been asked uh, a million times, and hopefully I'm doing well. But this one is one that has been asked a million times, just because I, it, I think it's a real interesting question. Uh, Tommy claims he is from New Orleans. <laughs> Do you believe him? Oh, I think he spent some time there. But yeah. I, I mean, I don't think he's originally from there. Yeah. Um, is it like a secret, like like where he gets this kind of European uh, appearance about him, like th like this accent that's been placed in, you know, Eastern Europe and France, like... Um, like he's kind of tight-lipped about it because he wanna he kind of wanna wants to uh, seem like an American, right? Mm, yeah, I think his big thing is uh, he wants to keep uh, where he's from private, and he just wants to be accepted yeah. as an American. Yeah, and that's understandable. You know, a lot of tons of you know performers f feel that way. Um, it's like uh, Peter Laurie was big about that. Oh, he was. Yeah. Um, Did the room open doors to you or close doors to you, and in what proportion? Oh, I think they definitely opened doors. I don't, I don't think it was the type of movie, really, that uh, once the movie came out, I had kind of been doing different things, and I was living in Europe, so mm -hmm. all it could have really done is open doors. Yeah, that's good, yeah. And, it, and it's been, you know, been doing this for 
more than 10 years, you know, riding the room train. So it's... It, well, yeah, it actually didn't really heat up until like 2009. So it's yeah. been like the last four or five years. Oh, yeah. And that was when uh, it was on Cartoon Network. Correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I noticed that earlier this evening you went to a cafeteria here called The Hub. I'm interested to know what food did you get at the cafeteria? I got the uh, <laughs> hummus uh, vegetarian sandwich. I've never had it. You recommend it? Yeah, it was good. All right. We don't have any of the the um, cafeteria faculty listening, so you can uh, you can be... Yeah, everything actually looked really yeah. great. I wanted to get a smoothie, but they didn't have enough staff on service. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, Str- everything looked really good. Strange hours with the smoothie place. Um, do women ever, or women, do women or men, do they ever come up to you and do they ever say, want to come to my room? Did they say that to um, you? Not really exactly. No? Maybe let's go out and have a drink. Yeah. If someone made that joke, like, I think that's a pretty cool pun. I just made it myself. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty clever. Yeah. If someone said that to you, do you think that you would be more likely to sleep with them or less likely? Um, or or is this too personal? You don't want to answer that. I don't know if I would. I don't know if it would affect me either way. Okay. But maybe go try it tonight. <laughs> on, Greg. On, on, on some on uh on whatever person you see out there. Okay. Well, it won't work. Let, it me, won't, let me know how it works yeah, out. It won't work for me because I wasn't in a film called The Room. But just try it. Okay. <laughs> maybe um, it'll uh, just like The Room sparked this magic. Why not? You know, maybe it'll. Maybe it works maybe just it for up. fans too. Yeah. I mean, you could also say, you know, I like the candles, the music, the sexy dress. You could just throw that line out anywhere because they don't have to be there to yeah, work. Yeah, that's universal. They don't even need to see the film to it appreciate It worked on that. me. I mean, she, you know, I saw the, the imaginary candles and sexy dress, and I just couldn't resist Lisa. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you, man. Um, in the short documentary that you showed before your event, um, uh it was said that the actors didn't see the script while making the film. Tell me, tell me more about that. It was just basically scene to scene. So, yeah. uh, Tommy thought they might steal it, and you don't you don't want to have a gold mine like that script out. It's too precious. Yeah. So you just want to release it little by little. It's it's the type of thing that is so valuable and so brilliant that people might get jealous, and you don't you, they may not be able to control themselves. Right. Right. So, did Tommy not consider making copies of the script and then giving the copies out? Or no, because the he wanted to keep like that. Uh, I mean, he refers to my book as the Red Bible. Well, let's go back and refer to that as the White Bible. Oh, okay. You wanna, you know, you wanna keep it sacred. Yeah, I kept my copy for like 13 years now. I mean, I I've moved several times. I've thrown a lot of stuff out, mm-hmm. but that script and the the Shakespeare commercial. They'll stay in the safe. Yeah, that Shakespeare commercial is a real. That's that's special. I n- I never saw that before now, and that was cool. Yeah. Um, Hundred years from now, I think it'll be uh, you know Scorsese and uh, Tommy Wiseau's commercial. Yeah, I think people will forget about Shakespeare and they'll just see. That Tommy is. I mean, that is kind of the new Shakespeare. I mean, just, yeah. you just have to accept that that is that's taken over. I think people will see that commercial and they'll be like. I don't know why he's wearing that funny hat and saying to be or not to be, but this you know, is... Someday I may make a movie, like Anonymous, that was made about Shakespeare. Yeah. Because um, I just think that we need to find out, you know, where that brilliance came from, that Shakespeare, to be or not to be. Yeah. Maybe this film that James Franco is making, maybe, maybe that will um, sort of be a relic for people of the future to say... This Tommy Wiseau was, yeah. was an artist. I hope he does a shot-for-shot shot remake of that commercial. Yeah, yeah. With a, and I'm really pulling for Javier Bardem to play, uh, to play Tommy. I think um, with with all of the money I have as a 20-year-old student, um, I'm not giving any of it to casting Javier Bardem. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned in the book that Tommy was actually he actually had a lot of money before making this film. Mm. Um, do you know like how he got that money? Can you say? Yeah, he was a very successful retail guy selling jeans. Really? He had his own commercial. People showed up. You know, before there was lines for the room, there was lines for his jeans. I believe it, man. I believe yeah. every word of it. Um, what hair product do you use? 
Um, should I forget? <laughs> Whatever, whatever's in the hotel. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, I use um, Arm and Hammer. Is that is that a shampoo? Yeah. Yeah, I use Arm and Hammer. I do two in one uh, dandruff shampoo and conditioner. Well, that's good. Yeah, you think it? You think it's working? Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you have fun making the room? Like, like there's a lot of fun time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I always looked forward to going. Like, okay, we're gonna shoot this scene. How is Tommy gonna be able to get through it? Yeah, I just so I looked forward to parts of it. There were obviously some difficult times, but looking back, it was a pretty, you know, it was a once in a lifetime experience. Yeah, definitely. Like um, like with so many people getting fired. Like I just read a part of the book. I just you know got it earlier. Um, a lot of people got fired. I can imagine that would that was a lot a, of people added. wanted to get fired, but yeah. Oh yeah, because because there's the ambiguity. Did they get fired? Did they did they quit? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a. Uh, I don't think they cried for too long about it. Right. They, they In fact, I think they may have gone out to a celebratory dinner. Yeah, they may have said hip, hip, hooray, and, you know, jump for joy, for all we know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in in the book and um, in materials like the short documentary, when you talk about the man who was playing uh, Mark before you, you don't uh, use his name. You know, his name's Don. Yeah. I mean, it was Dan, but Tommy called him Don, so he's oh, Don. That's a beautiful name. Yeah. It's a woman's name. Yeah. He looks, once, you know, he looks like a Don. Yeah, I once knew a beautiful woman with that name. Um, Tommy did consider him as Lisa, but never mind about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what is the stupidest comment anyone has ever made about the room, and should they have left it in their pocket? Did you think the room was going to be a good movie? <laughs> That's pretty dumb. Yeah. Um, I think I'm running low on questions here. As you can see, I'm very stealthily going through my phone. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't know what you were doing there. Yeah. Um, I actually am just kind of stroking my pants. They're a nice I just material. thought you had an itch or something. Yeah. Um, so, um, since this is my last question, I figure uh, I will ask a question about the last scene in the film. Uh, the character Johnny has died, um, and you kind of go into his forehead, and you kind of examine his forehead. And the audience is not sure if it is a kiss or kind of an inspection scenario. I just, yeah, that's very perceptive. Yeah. So was it a, was it a kiss? Did it did a kiss take place? Um, I think it was admiration. Yeah. Thinking what? It's such a shame that such a lunar forehead is now gone. Yeah. So you got to admire something that's. Beautiful, you know. R.I.P. Rest in pieces. Um, and what was Tommy's direction? Like, like, what did he say to um, when you I were admiring? You cry, his dead I body? want you to show the world how much Mark loved Johnny. Yeah. Could you? So, you have a wonderful Tommy impression. So can, you, I, can you say in his voice? No, we need you to do something here. We need you to cry. I know Mickey Mouse acting. Give me something. Mickey Mouse acting? What does that mean? <laughs> It means kind of like half-ass or not first-rate. All right. I mean, like a Toyota versus a Mercedes. A Toyota would be a Mickey Mouse car. I hear that, man. Yeah. I mean, he said that about my car, but I did have the mouse ears on it, so I didn't know yeah. if he was saying it was shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All so. right. So this is Greg Sestero. The book is um, The Disaster Artist. Buy it, please. This man needs to support his wife and family. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, you might go somewhere, Greg. <laughs>